All right, here's an overview of the 1976 Datsun 280Z. Now that it's completed, So this is what it looks like, full electric. You'll notice as we get around to the rear, no tailpipe. There's no exhaust. Let me drop down here. No fuel tank, nothing. All I see is the differential in the rear suspension. Take a peek at the inside. Well, it doesn't look too different. Aftermarket steering wheel, aftermarket stereo. But it looks like a 280Z to me. Ah. In the rear we can see that there's something different. That's the 5 kilowatt charger. And there was just really nowhere to put it that it would be hidden and that it would get cooling air, be out of the weather, and so forth. So that's the only tall tale sign. So let's uh, let's open the hood and take a closer look inside. Well, doesn't look like a stock 280Z to me. So let's kind of give an overview here. What we have is the 12 volt auxiliary battery in the exact same position it was originally. We've added some electronics here. Our AVC2, which uh, works with our J1772 charge port, which we'll show you in a moment. You see our inertia switch. You see the fuse block, terminal strips, which are really great when it comes to having to do any testing or anything. Everything is really easy to get to and take readings if you ever needed to. Our main disconnect right here, easy to get to. This of course is the front battery pack. There's 22 cells in there, 11 on each side, and we'll show you the, the innards of that. There's a lower front pack. There's eight cells in there. On top of those are our two Curtis 1239E controllers. Down here in the hole here, kind of hard to view from here, but there's one of two pumps. There's one on the other side, just exactly like this. Those pumps pump coolant through this chill plate, which is underneath the um, controller, sandwiched to the controller. So you'll see our coolant reservoir right there. So the coolant flows out of the reservoir, through the pump, through the chill plate, then down to the uh, radiators down below and you'll see a couple of the fans but this radiator goes all the way across the lower portion there and uh, and then from the radiator back to your reservoir let's take a look from below here that's the front of the car you can see the radiators long and narrow with fans on top Notice nothing hanging down under the car. There's our contactor 
box has our main contacts in there, our fuses, our pre-charge relays, our pre-charge resistors, all that type of stuff is in that box. Over here on the driver's side of our front battery box is the uh, vacuum pump. Vacuum reservoir is down below. There's the throttle and throttle linkage. Well, in the rear, there's nothing to see other than the charger. Um, under the carpet, there's uh, this hardboard thing. Uh, can't lift this up right now because it's strapped down, the straps. But if you lift this up, you can see the lower battery box will show, show you shots of that without this cover on. But in other words, except for this little bit right here where the uh, charger is, this has the exact same amount of cargo space as it had originally. Another shot of the dash from the back here. So that's an overview of the Datsun conversion. We'll uh, go for a little uh, road test in the next video just as we did before we converted it. We'll again go for a little ride and show you how it drives, what it sounds like, all of that. But let me tell you, it's easier to drive. It, uh, it's just much smoother, much nicer now than it was originally. I'll take this over the original any day myself. Well, we have a lot of glare on the inside here, but we're going to give you a little <clears throat> little shot of the cockpit area here. So I'm going to turn on the key. This has something that I would break on any car I ever owned. It's this annoying buzzer, but not my car, so here it goes. You can hear the contactors kick in. And the uh, Curtis gauges go through their cycle. So we have our 12 volt gauge. Shows that uh, we got about 14.6, that our DC to DC converter is working as it should. And so closest to the driver, we have our primary controller. This is our secondary. Now, these gauges aren't necessary for anything other than programming and for monitoring. So we keep them for monitoring. So what we can monitor, if I can get a shot here, is RPMs, amps, volts, motor temperature, controller temperature, Minimum voltage, maximum amps, and back to RPMs. And we have the same thing on both of them. So a lot of times what I like to do, especially up here where it gets really hot, I'll stick one on motor temperature, I'll stick the other one On controller temperature and I'll monitor one of the controllers they usually run identical temperature so we have a uh, green light just to remind you that the system's on because you can't hardly hear anything I can hear a slight noise of the pumps and fans 
but that's very, very slight. You'll never hear it outside of your garage. This is the switch for the heater. This is our JLD 404 down here. And so we're pulling two amps right now, just running the DC to DC converter. That's our pack voltage. That's the amp hours out. We drove around the parking lot a little bit here to get the video and so forth. So that's it. All the other controls are exactly the same as they were from the factory. So here's the stock filler flap, and inside that's our J1772 charge port. A common issue you'll find, even with factory vehicles typically, is that 12 volt battery will go dead when the car sits for any length of time. So we always include a little trickle charger and in this case it's mounted right under our main disconnect switch down in there and so if you're going to leave the car for an extended period of time you simply plug that trickle charger in and no worries it's going to take care of the uh, 12 volt battery for you So, as always, thank you for watching. Hope you'll join us in our next video. Enjoy the ride.